him, I think, when I saw him. Okay, I'm going to start this off with a confession. I am not a big fan of crowded places or noisy places or places where a lot of people stand around and talk, especially not about motorcycles. I know it's ironic considering what I do do. But here I am at India Bike Week 2016 to see what India Bike Week is all about. And a question I really want to know the answer to is, why do people do come here? Is it just the big party or something more? Let's find out. The sound of a throbbing monster. The Harley Davidson. To find out, I spent two hot days and two power pack nights at India Bike Week in Goa. And in those 48 hours, one thing became very clear. People came by the bike load. Clubs from all parts of India and beyond on all kinds of bikes to immerse themselves in a unique cocktail of sensory inputs. It's all about bikes, people, friends, cult, engine, sound, experience, roar. There were hotly contested battles for the loudest bike, but through the day and the night, you could hear many more battles that were just for, well, personal satisfaction. Some other riders prefer things a bit more solid. Really interesting, a lot of new bikes here. Yes, there were plenty of new bikes for riders to stare at. From DSK Benelli, from Triumph and from Indian. But the one that got my attention was this. Now Ducati's made a big red splash here at India Bike Week because they've gone and unveiled this, their baby superbike. This is the 959 Panigale. It's really not that much of a baby because it's nearly a leader class motorcycle now with all the updates to the engine. And uh, the really cool part is they've unveiled it here but they've also announced that it's going to be going on sale in July for a price tag of 14 lakh rupees for a Ducati, for a near leader class motorcycle, that's just fantastic. I think the only downside to it is that it's only going to be offered in red for India. Cannot wait to ride it. Then there was something very different, but that got me just as excited as the Ducati. Now in all this frenzy of power, speed and high-tech machines, we have this on display here at the India Bike Week. It's called the Bogota. It's uh, named after a Colombian city where this idea first struck the gentleman who set up this company here in India and he hopes to make this. What it essentially is, is a very high-end sort of cycle that also has a small engine mounted at the back. This is uh, roughly a 25cc two-stroke engine and uh, it can propel this to a top speed of 25 kilometers an hour and has a coated average of 75 kilometers to the liter. And what does it feel like to ride? That's what we have to find out, right? Uh, oh wait, I gotta start it first. You gotta come here and see this. It's pretty simple. You just got to yank it, start it up, and everything else is fairly simple. It's like a motorcycle. You have a throttle. You have the pedals like a cycle, so you can get give yourself a push and get off. For now, hang on to your 62,000 rupees for this top of the line Bogota El Clasico because it will only go on sale in the next few months. But there was plenty else at IBW to max your credit card out on. There was the very best of luggage options for all kinds of bikes and from all kinds of brands. And there were performance bits on offer too. The one that really caught my eye was the Acropovic stall. Pity they aren't allowed to sell anything for KTMs in India. While shopping was fun, the joy of IBW was something more primal. It was about the way things were before social and networking became one digital term. 
It's a fun activity, more than the event and the things happening around. Our focus is meeting the guys who have uh, a similar uh, look towards what motorcycling is and are working towards betterment of the you know, fraternity. And that was it. There was lots of inspiration. It was climbing cars, jumping off stages. It was 12-time World Trials champion Dougie Lampkin. And he was showing the crowds that impossible was, well, nothing. It's the first time a trials bike's been here in India. So obviously it's completely new for everybody. But you know, the excitement from people just looking at the bike and realizing there's no seat and it looks different. And you know, the excitement is just getting more and more really. So, you know, it's great to show all these biking people, you know, a new sport and, and something different, but also fantastic to be a part of it here as well. And you can see there's a lot of families here, you know, there's a lot of passion about bikes and, you know, if kids want to ride bikes, you know, that's great. And there was proof that the love of motorcycles was being passed down generation to generation. My uncle was riding, so uh, I thought I should also ride. I want to be a world champion. And there was another legend who was telling his story of battling the odds. The only Indian to take part and complete the arduous Dakar Rally, CS Santosh. I'm here with telling my story, so I hopefully I'll be able to inspire one of the dads to be able to put their kids, whether it's a boy or girl, put an engine between them, whether it's a go-kart or a motorcycle. If we can do that, I think one step in the right direction. There were also tales of how motorcycles have impacted people's life. Given them a form of expression, there were others whose lives were molded by motorcycles, like this sculptor. I like working with metal because I like the effort that goes into it. Every piece is a struggle and it requires a little bit of strength to manipulate metal. And I'm also very clumsy with a paintbrush, so I never put through the finesse, but I'm very good with a hammer. Saad's brother is also similarly affected. I think the first thing that I wanted to ride after breaking my cycle was a motorcycle and my parents never allowed it. So the only thing I could do about it was sit and draw about motorcycles. So that sort of became a rebellion thing. Then when I finally got to ride a motorcycle, the feel was like, uh, like nothing I had felt before. It was truly inspiring. And on the second day, I felt I had to tackle a very difficult task. Well, here's where we've got all the finalists for the bike up build off. Four bikes, all very different, with very strong ideas behind them. The idea of this bike was to make something larger than life, something that's monstrous on the road. It's based on a 1985 Royal Enfield engine, and it's, uh, we have inspired it from Indian Army. You can see the shape and colors, all has been inspired from Indian Army. The basic idea behind this bike is to make a Royal Enfield which can handle well and perform well. People usually now go in for all modern type of technology and uh, forgetting the past. So we, we want to show that even past, during those past days also, there was something good looking. It wasn't just about standing around either. There were competitions for stunters as well and there were burnout competitions. If you weren't interested in putting your skills to the test, you could have tested your bike's abilities on the dyno at the race dynamic stalls. And you could have gotten it tuned there as well. There was plenty to do and plenty to see. And lots of people to meet, thank and hope to keep in touch with. And there were the special few who were honoured there as well. It's the Immortal turned out to be the one that got the most marks in the bike build-off. And once ushered off stage, I knew that this dusty, chaotic and incredibly loud carnival was coming to a close for me.
Okay, so India Bike Week's wrapping up in a place of glory and in a crescendo of sound. I am going to be glad to give my ears a break from the loud music and all the bikes that have just been going flat out at standstill. But still, I have to admit, it's been really nice to be here, to meet the people, to see the things which you just can't experience. Well, certainly not in the fullness over a keyboard or over the internet. I'm really glad I came here. Next time, I would like to be back but with your plugs on.